in this particular video I will be showing how you can go about saving uh, if you don't have the full program and as a matter of fact this particular situation uh, of saving like this is what's called tracking out or stims um, people use stims in studio sessions and it allows people to collaborate between multiple digital audio workstations or DAWs. So if you were to be using GarageBand or Logic or Ableton, if you bounce your project out into individual stims, which are WAV files, uh, I recommend WAV files. Some people try to do AIFF files, but WAV files are the only true universal file. So if you bounce it out to a high quality WAV file, then you can load that in and drag it into any program, Pro Tools, FL Studio, anything, and people can use the sounds that you've created to begin to uh, work or to finish off something that you've done. So I'm just going to make a really quick beat here. Um, nothing too intricate. So I'll add an instrument of sorts. Okay, so I got GMS in here. I'm gonna clone it and make like a bass and a synth. So this first one, I'll get like an analog bass. I'll record it in. Put it into the notes and automation. That's fine. Nothing, I'm not trying to get too intricate here. I just want to show you how to uh, track stuff out so you can save it. Uh, I'm going to use Alt Q to quantize this. Okay. And then I'm just gonna let's pick a like a center a lead. Yeah, let's do that. Nothing crazy. I'm not trying to make a platinum hit or anything. Just trying to show you something real quick. Now let's turn that off. I guess I could repeat this a couple times. So I'll just put this into the playlist here. Click song. Okay, so uh, what you can do here is put each of these on their own individual track. I'm gonna put this on five and this on six. So now I wanna click my mixer track and this is important that you do this. Um, opening up your mixer, because all your sounds are on different channels. So I'm gonna right click this. Um, well, I'm gonna highlight these first so all of these are green. And I'm going to right click here, click channel routing, and then root select the channel starting from this track. Now everything is in here. I recommend naming these if you haven't. So this will be my bass, and this will be my synth. Okay, I'm not using the hi hat or the snare, so well, I guess I could. I'll just throw this in here and just to keep it interesting. Yeah, this will show you something. So I'm going to put this on pattern two just because I want to be able to put it in and take it out. So we'll do it this way. Okay. Um, sweet. So everything is on its channel. So what I want to do now is click file. And you're going to want to make a folder for this. So 
I'll go file, wave file. And I'm going to put this in this folder, the class recordings folder. So I'm going to just name this uh, exporting stems or export stems. And this is how you can save uh, your wave files. So I'm going to actually put shift, uh, well, I'll put ES for exporting stems. So that's the name. And I'll put underscore. Now you don't need to do this, but it'll help because seeing as your mixer tracks over here are named it's going to have es underscore and then it's going to have the name of the track afterwards so i do this because it just makes life easier i'm gonna click save and i want to make sure full song is selected i'm going to click wave here and then i am going to open up this miscellaneous tab and click split mixer tracks it's important to have this uh, highlighted and we are doing wave files not mp3s wave files split mixer tracks okay um i guess i'll look at the quality here oh, that doesn't matter i want my bit depth to be 24 though it's uh industry standard now uh i don't really need the rest of this stuff um it's not gonna hurt anything but i just really don't need it so I'm going to click start. Okay. So now when I open up that folder that I just created class recordings. Okay. So open up this folder and here you have bass clap current hat click uh, kick master and synth. Now, as you can see, there's no, uh, your master track is this one. This is the one that has everything on it. The current is going to be pretty much the same as the master. I usually end up deleting the current, but the master is nice to have um, just in case. But I'll just delete this. So I'm gonna delete this, sweet. Uh, now, I could actually delete all this stuff, but I'm just gonna mute it for now. I can drag in all of these files, like so. And this is the WAV file of each of those sounds that I had programmed in there. Okay, so I'm gonna mute the master because it has everything on it. So, well, actually, I'll solo it really quickly so you can hear. Okay, uh, but if I were to turn this off and just turn on the sounds that I just stemmed or tracked out, you get the same thing. Only difference here is that I can now solo all the stuff individually. And uh, I can still toy with them. So as you guys are familiar with samples at this point, I can uh, click each of these. I can normalize it. That's a lot louder. Um, I could reverse it if I wanted. Uh, or I could like cut it and make copies and make some of it reverse and some of it not reverse. Um, I could move stuff around if I wanted. Um, so, and this is this is honestly how I arrange my songs anyway. But this way, you don't have to get frustrated if you lay down a track that you like um, over here in the channel rack. Uh, if you lay down stuff that you like, like this, you like your drum patterns, you don't need to change them. Might as well just what they call print them out. Might as well print them out into stems or track outs, these WAV files, putting them on an individual mixer and then um, being able to throw them into a program and work on it later if you want to. Now, when it's in a WAV file, you can't change any of the notes. So be mindful that once it's in WAV file, it's printed. Uh, you can't change the notes anymore, but you can move them around if you wanted. You can essentially sample yourself at this point. So let me make sure my grid is right. Uh, just to show you, I'm going to do this. I can move all this stuff around just like that uh, previous video. I could even repeat it if I want.
but the the notes are set in stone um also if you wanted it to loop uh you're gonna have to make sure that it's a perfect four so you would cut off this tail here if you wanted i typically leave it in for the natural decay of sound but you don't have to do that but if i play this all the way out it's gonna just play here and it's gonna stop here and then start over again like that Sweet. I hope that helped you and I will have another video up soon.